of a nice shade here. I'm actually using my um, camera on my new computer, which I'm hoping it doesn't do that lagging thing. You know what I'm saying? Like where it doesn't match with the words that you're saying properly. Anyway, without further ado, I'm actually doing a couple of videos today since I'm on vacation from work. I've actually had a couple subscribers put in video requests, and this one, I remember somebody specifically asked, don't mind my hair, and I look like a weird little girl, but kind of. They requested that I do a video on the 13 goals of a witch, and how to, how, like, how ugh, to explain it thoroughly. I was going to turn it into a series of videos, but I decided to make it one hell of a long video. So without further ado, let's get to it. The very first thing of it, 13 goals of which are, I forgot who the hell made it, um, somebody made it, and it's 13 guidelines or 13 things that a witch, specifically more of a Wiccan, should follow. Now, they don't have to, but it, it, they sh it's just a guideline. Okay, so 13 goals of which, the first one, which is know yourself. Now, know yourself applies to, um... The witch's pyramid to to know to know yourself means know who you are know what your likes are what your dislikes are what makes you tick what makes you upset what what is your favorite colors what what is it that you like what about you that's what knowing yourself is about knowing what your limits are knowing where you draw the line with things you have to know all of these you have to know yourself some people for years don't know who they really are. Um, for example, when you're a teenager, mostly high school, this is when everybody goes to their expressions, where they go through their phases, or they stay like that forever. Like, for example, me in high school, I was a goth, and I still somewhat am dressing dark, still a little bit. And during my high school years is where I discovered who the hell I was. So, knowing yourself, like I said, means knowing who you are, your likes, your dislikes, what makes you uncomfortable, what makes you tick, what makes you upset, etc., etc. And next one is knowing your craft. Now, knowing your craft, this means studying, um, looking up online, reading books, not just studying, but also practicing your craft, like putting it into realization. Um... Study your herbal correspondences, study your elemental, your color correspondences, etc., etc. Know what it is that you're doing. Don't just be practicing witchcraft without knowing nothing. You have to know all these things, which is what Know Your Craft is about. Uh, three, learn and grow. Now, this one can be a little tricky to explain. Learn and grow. It goes back into knowing your craft, but it's not just talking about craft. It's talking about you as an individual. It's talking about when you say, when it says to learn and grow, this means to learn as much as you can, not just from your craft, but learn maybe different cultures, maybe different scientific things, different things in math, cooking, etc. Learn a lot and grow. Growing means go with the flow of life changing as time goes if you do change um maturing a little bit um that's pretty much what it means to me the next one would be uh on. apply knowledge with wisdom now this one i can see where this one you can get a little bit of uh tricky to understand to apply knowledge with wisdom to me that means hold on just being my Okay. To apply knowledge with wisdom. To be knowledgeable is being book smart, etc., knowing things because you studied it. To be wise means to just know something. So you can know a lot of things, you can study all you want, but to actually apply things wisely is different. So what it's saying is, is to be smart but also be wise, which means to me, trusting your inner voice, your inner intuition with the knowledge that you learn. If that makes any sense. Onwards. My ne the next one is to achieve balance. Now, achieve balance 
can mean a multitude of things. It can mean, to me at least, it means achieve balance with your spiritual life and your physical world and the physical life or the mundane life. What I mean by that is don't separate the magical from the mundane. Combine them. In your daily activities, like such as taking a shower, envision cleansing yourself when you're cleaning your house, when you're dusting, cooking, whatever it is, incorporate some kind of magic into it. And it also talks about, to me at least, with achieving balance is achieving emotional balance. And what I mean by that is letting things out, venting when you need to, cry when you need to. But don't dwell on negative things all the time. Just let it out when you need to. And it also, to me, it means working with day and night, masculine, feminine. Try to balance the energies out because too much of one energy, too much of one thing can be overbearing and can drive you overboard. So to me, it means, look what I said, don't push the mundane to the magical. Don't push the dark and the light too far apart try to combine them that's what that means to me okay so <clears throat> on words anyway sixth one is to keep your words in good order Ooh, that means basically it's the really old concept of be careful what you say um say to others how you want them to say to you whatever it is basically don't be a dick don't go around calling people you're a bitch you're an asshole or etc etc don't go around doing that think clearly before you speak because one thing you say can have a bad consequence to it so you really want to think before you speak so therefore keeping your words in good order keep your thoughts in good order this is the same thing with thinking or with saying don't constantly we're witches we can't keep constantly thinking negatively if we're thinking constantly nothing but negative things and especially harmful things towards people it can actually happen we have to remember we're witches here people we sometimes don't need to cast a spell in order for something bad to happen to somebody just because we're thinking about it it can happen so sometimes yes it's good sometimes like you're going to have it but try not to think negatively all the time. That's what I personally think keep your thoughts in good order means. Like, don't dwell on negativity and hatred constantly. Okay, and eight, celebrate life. Okay, so celebrate life. This means go out, have fun. Don't sit around on your ass all damn day watching TV or laying down constantly. Like every once in a while, granted, that's fine. But go out to the club, you know, hang out with your friends, spend time with family, go out and have a ball. Be grateful when you wake up in the morning. Breathe in life. That's what this means. It means live your damn life. Don't sit around. It just doesn't mean celebrate it. It means live it to me. You know what I mean. Like live your damn life. Have a ball every day. Treat every day like it's going to be your last. Live it out to the best you can. <clears throat> Attune with the cycles of the earth. This means to celebrate the seasons, particularly the Sabbaths. This means keeping track of how the cycles of the earth are changing and attune with it. Do rituals to attune yourself with the four seasons, with the Sabbaths, um, and get to know the changing of the seasons and what's going on. Be aware of it. That's what that means to me. Breathe and eat correctly. Now, this one, um, I was actually going to do a separate video on this one, but I'm going to just do this. Um, to breathe and eat correctly means, to, well, breathing is just common sense, just breathe. But eating correctly, it means what it's talking about. This is the concept I kind of carried on with me from Christianity. Our bodies are temples. They are embodiments of the goddess and God. So, and now these day and ages, we have... McDonald's, we have Burger King, we have all this disgusting food that's preserved and fucking loaded with a bunch of junk and shit. We're not treating our bodies correctly. What this literally means is eating correctly, eating proper foods. Like, granted, it's fine to eat a couple chips and maybe a snack or something like that every once in a while, but not every day. Every day we should be filling our body with the food that gives us nutrients, and that's what eating correctly means. 
eating three meals a day, eating snacks in between, making sure your body is nur ugh, nourished. To me at least, because I'm not just saying this because I'm vegan, it means eating tons of fruits, eating plenty of vegetables, drinking lots of water, and I can't emphasize that enough, is drinking water. Human beings should at least drink um, about almost a gallon at least, for men at least, or at least two liters of water daily, depending on your activity. If you do a lot of exercise, like you're an athlete or you're working at a really fast-paced job where you're doing a lot of work, I would recommend a lot more water. The main key is just drink water whenever you're thirsty. If you're thirsty, don't go for pop. Don't reach toward something sugary and salty because it's going to dehydrate you even worse. Water is our best friend. But anyway, onwards to the next part is exercising the body. This one is extremely important because it goes along with how I said our bodies are temples and embodiments of the goddess and god. Exercise keeps us going. It's like with the physical law, whatever it is in science. A body in motion stays in motion. A body at rest stays at rest. Your body needs exercise. You have to do it to keep your muscles toned. Not like fit, like buffed, but so your muscles don't give out a lot. Because if you're a person who sits around a lot and doesn't do a lot of exercising, you don't have to do hardcore sit-ups and push-ups. Even just going, getting up and walking every once in a while for about 20 minutes. If you don't do that, your bones will tend to get weak. Your body doesn't live up to the health that you need it to be. And treating your body that poorly is showing disrespect to the goddess and God, in my opinion. So that's what it's saying with exercise the body. Treat it right. Your body is an embodiment of the goddess and God, and it is a household of magic. And if it's not taken care of properly, you won't be able to do your proper magic, and you won't be able to honor the deity properly. Onwards is meditate. This is the twelfth one. This is like the most important thing, one of the most important things a witch needs to do. What it means by meditate is you don't have to sit down with your freaking legs uh, sitting in Indian pose or doing some weird Indian yoga meditation thing. Meditation is simply clearing the mind and doing specific breathing exercises to relax the mind, body, and spirit. And it's also a time for visualization, which during magic and rituals, we as witches have to do this because it's how we bring things to manifestation. Meditation is amazing for the body because, like I said, it relaxes the entire being. All three and all planes of existence, it relaxes you. And as witches, we need to know how to meditate to be able to do things magic-wise properly, in my opinion. Like I said, you don't have to do sit down in Indian cross pose. You can just stay, sit in your chair, close your eyes, and just breathe. And just imagine yourself on a beach or something. Imagine yourself in a tree, in a forest, or just imagine the day, the bad things, the day going away. That's to me what meditation is good for, and what it, why it's needed. Okay, and the last and final part of the 13 goals of which, which is honor the goddess and god, which if I'm not mistaken, let me see, there might be variations to that depending on tradition. No? Yeah, there is. There's two different variations of that from what I'm seeing. Hold on. Depending on if you're Wiccan or Pagan. If you're Wiccan, it says to honor the goddess and god. And if you're pagan, it says to honor nature. And there's another form. Basically what it means is based on your beliefs in deity. If you don't believe in goddess and god, then honor nature. Or honor, you know, like honor, not, don't go outside and worship trees. That's not what it's telling you to do. It's telling you to be respectful of nature, not trash it. Say thank you to nature for everything it's provided for you, your house, the food you're given, etc., etc. And then on to the point with the goddess and god, it means lighting candles for them, saying thank you to them every morning or every day, every night, etc. Honoring them in rituals, honoring during the Sabbaths, honoring them during the Esbats, etc., etc. Showing your gratitude and honoring them. Um... As Wiccans, we should be thankful to the goddess and god, or whatever deity you may believe in, or, or 
whatever your beliefs are, even if you don't believe in deity, you should just say thankful that you have the things that you have, like the house, your food, whatever it is. Just be thankful and honor, you know, pay respect. That's what it means to me. So that's pretty much it. Until next time, Mary Park and blessed be. And my camera would stop.